Hi guys, it's Miss Leah, and I want to welcome you to the third week of September. Can you believe we're already more than halfway through September? I definitely cannot. This month's theme is called Ready for Launch, where we learn about boldly doing what needs to be done. This week, we're learning about focusing on what needs to be done. So, I will see you after the video. Got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can't stand still. No, you have given me purpose. Oh, my, all my heart is yours. Oh, my, all my life. Space travelers, it is I, Jacob, and I'm here to take you to the very edge of the universe, or at the very least, the very edge of initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Initiative is very important. Too often we see what needs to be done and we don't do it, usually because flashing red light. Red light, what could that mean? I'll have to check the space travel manual. Red light. Ah, red light. Computer malfunction alarm. To reset computer, press the blue button. Okay, good. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes, initiative. I was saying that sometimes we see what needs to be done, but then we don't do it because a blue flashing light. Oh. Oh. 
Blue light. Blue light. Blue light. Blue light. Clogged toilet. To unclog, press the orange button. That'll do the trick. <laughs> Man, it's really hard to focus around here. What I was saying was... A flashing orange light? Okay. Orange light, orange light. In today's story, we'll hear more about Nehemiah rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. A really difficult job. Orange light. Got it. Whew. I hope Nehemiah doesn't lose focus. Oh man. What could that alarm be? Oh. I just got a text message. See you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 2, 4, and 6. When Nehemiah traveled to Jerusalem and surveyed the broken down walls, he saw immediately what had to be done. We must rebuild. God moved the hearts of the people to join him. Let's get started. Hooray! But while the Jewish people were eager to repair the tumbled down walls and ruined gates, the people in the lands around them were not so thrilled. Uh, what do they think they're doing? A city with no walls stood open to attack. The people inside could never become a strong nation. The enemies of the Jews knew that if the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the Jewish people might become a powerful enemy. They must cease and desist. Sanballat, a Horonite, and Tobiah, an official from Ammon, marched right up to the place where the people gathered to begin work. Pathetic. What a ragtag group. Why bother to even start? You shall never finish. Plus, the king is gone. I think you're trying to take over. Nehemiah kept his cool. The God of heaven will give us success. We serve him. So we'll start rebuilding the walls. <laughs> Good luck with that. Nehemiah and the Israelites didn't need luck. They needed God's help. It was true that a few of the Jewish people were builders. Let's see. We've got priests, nobles, goldsmiths, perfume makers, farmers, grape growers, shepherds, any stonemasons. Well, let's get organized. Where he could, Nehemiah assigned each family group to work on a section of the wall closest to their home. Eliashib, you and the other priests will rebuild the sheep gate. Then work on the wall up to the Tower of the Hundred. On it. Hassanah's family. I want you to work on the fish gate, lay its beams, and repair the doors with metal bolts and bars. We've got this. Nehemiah continued to give each family or group a part of the wall to rebuild. Old and young, men and women, they put everything they had to gather the fallen stones and hewing beams. In a short time, the wall began to rise again. Inconceivable! Sanballat and Tobiah were shocked to see the Jews actually making progress. They would mock the work to anyone who would listen. Do those Jews think they can make the wall new in a single day? Preposterous! The stones are all scattered and piled up like garbage. I suppose an itty bitty fox tried to climb up on that excuse for a wall. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the whole thing would fall down. <laughs> Once again, Nehemiah ignored the heckling. Instead, he prayed as he worked. God, please listen to our prayer. Some people hate us. They're saying bad things about us. Don't hide your eyes from their guilt. With a burst of energy, the people worked even harder until the wall was half as high as it needed to be. Preposterous! 
Time for some action. Tobiah and Sambalat began to plot with the surrounding nations to attack Jerusalem before the wall could be finished. We must set guards, day and night. Even with guards in place, enemies threatened. The Jews were exhausted. There's rubble everywhere, and our enemies say that no matter where we are, they'll attack. Nehemiah refused to be distracted. He stationed families at the weakest parts of the walls, armed with swords, spears, and bows. Don't be afraid. Fight for your families. From that day, everyone carried their weapons, even as they worked. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, run to join us. God will fight for us. Nehemiah and the Jews worked from the very first light of sunrise until the stars came out at night. At last, the wall itself was finished. It's full height. All the gaps are filled. Yay! Yeah! But we can't rest yet. The entrance gate still must be repaired. Sanballat was furious, but he had another play to make. So he sent a message to Nehemiah, who was working high on the wall. Sanballat says, Come, let's talk with one another. Let's meet in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Oh no, I don't think so. Nehemiah knew perfectly well they were planning to harm him, but he stayed focused on the work and sent his own messenger to Sanballat. Nehemiah says, I am working on a huge project. Why should the work stop while I leave it? Why should I go down and talk with you? Inconceivable! Try again. Five times, Sanballat sent messages. He even threatened to tell the Persian king that Nehemiah was trying to make himself king. Tell Sanballat you're just making that up. Oh, I'll have to send another message. Uh, time for our new strategy. Sanballat made one last desperate attempt. He hired a man named Shemaiah to make Nehemiah look bad with his own people. Nehemiah, some men are coming at night to kill you. Let's go hide in the temple and lock the doors. Nehemiah knew that God had not sent Shemaiah. Should a man like me run away? No, I won't go. Once again, Nehemiah saw through the tricks of his enemies. Instead of hiding away and looking foolish, he trusted God and doubled down on the work. On the 52nd day of work, the wall and gates were finished. The wall had been finished in record time by a group of ordinary, everyday people. It was clear to everyone that God had helped Nehemiah and the Jews stay focused and finish strong. Can't talk now, gotta focus. Sorry about that. It's so easy to get distracted sometimes, isn't it? I mean, you probably don't get distracted by alarms and flashing lights, because... But there are a lot of things that can distract you. When you're supposed to be focusing on homework, you might get distracted by the TV or the internet. When you're supposed to be cleaning your room, you might end up playing with your toys. When you're supposed to be listening to your teacher, you're making funny faces at your friends. We get distracted by our stuff, by other people, even by our own thoughts and worries. There's so many things fighting for our focus. It can be overwhelming. I mean, look at Nehemiah. He was rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. He had enemies on the outside and people fighting with each other on the inside. It would have been so easy for him to get distracted, but he stayed focused. I mean, look at Jesus. There were a lot of things that could have distracted Jesus from doing what he came here to do. But he stayed focused on what was most important, saving the world and making it possible for us to have a relationship with God. Staying focused isn't always easy, but when you focus, you can get things done quicker and better. So the one thing to remember today is this, stay focused on what needs to be done. If you need help, take a minute or two to talk to God before you have something you need to focus on and try to steer clear of the things that can distract you. I'm putting you on silent. And when in doubt, consult the space travel manual. If you have one. What do all the lights mean? 
All the lights, all the lights, all the lights, all the lights. Oh. Dance party. I definitely did and I learned a lot about focusing on what needs to be done. I know I can get distracted very easily so I'm very thankful that I can pray to God and ask him to help me focus whenever I need. Alright before you go will you pray with me? So I need you to fold your hands, close your eyes, you know the deal. Dear God thank you so much for being there for us when we need you. Thank you for loving us no matter what whether we do the wrong thing or the right thing. Please help us focus on what needs to get done, and please help us listen to your word and do what you need us to do. Amen. Alright, I'll see you guys some other time. Bye!